Hello, hello, good evening. I'm Pastor April. Welcome to Library of Prophetic Influence. Tonight, we are going to bring some juicy information to you. It's going to be revelation, revolutionizing the things of God tonight. Tonight, we are going to talk about two different types of spirits. One is going to be on the spirit of confusion, and the other one's going to be on the spirit of madness. So we, I know that you say spirit of confusion, that's something that we have in common, like everyone in this world. Because when it comes to confusion, it's something that always clouds our mind. It's something that distorts, it disrays. You say, well, give me the true definition of what confusion is so we can fix this thing. And I'm going to give you that information tonight. But tonight, I like to always start with a foundation so we can be able to move forward. So as I minister, you're able to keep up with what I'm talking about. So talking about the spirit of confusion. When we talk about the spirit of confusion, it's something that we always encounter when we're reading the word of God or when we're trying to grow in the things of God. You always have um, uncertainty. You have cloudy, uh, cloudiness in your mind. You can't retain things. You have a poor recall memory. you unclear in one's mind. There is things like you just feel stagnant. You feel like you have like a sheet over your mind when you're trying to read the word of God. And you find yourself reading that same verse over and over again, and you can't get understanding. That is confusion. Confusion comes straight from the enemy. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14, God is not the author of confusion. So I'm here to tell you, people of God, that the enemy has put something up on our minds that's trying to wear us down silently because he don't want us to know that he is there. He wants us to believe that the things that are going on in our mind is our own actions. But I'm here to tell you that if you have these type of spiritual symptoms, those things, you need to go to the spiritual doctor because that is of the enemy. That is not of God. God is not an author of confusion. I'm going to read Proverbs 2.2 2 because I want you to have understanding of what the word of God is saying to you. What is your father speaking to you? He says in Proverbs 2.2, 2, my son, my daughter, if you will receive my words and, and treasure my commandments, mentioned meaning his laws and his instruction, his direction, that is what he's saying, within you, he says, so that your ear is attentive to skillful and godly wisdom and apply your heart to understanding, seeking it consistently and striving for it eagerly. Yes, if you do these things, he said, lift up your voice for understanding. So when you come into a place of confusion and you just feel that you're stuck and you don't know which direction to go in, God is telling you, call up on me. He said, I will give you the wisdom. I will give you the knowledge. I will give you the understanding to be able to open up the minds of confusion because the enemy wants to keep you in that place to where you can't grow. But God has given you instruction on how to grow. So if you have that, you just got to come against it and repent and read the word of God over that. I'm going to, I'm going to um, contest today because I, for one, had that stigma. I had that problem. I would come into a place to where I would read the word of God, and I am a Bible, a bookworm. And I know when I read the word of God as well as books that I always get a quick understanding with revelation. But at this instant, I had a cloud. I had confusion. I could not comprehend what I was reading. It kept on. I kept trying to read it. And I said, okay, well, if I walk away and come back, maybe I will get new insight. It didn't happen. What happened was it just motivated me from reading the word of God. It made me walk away from the Bible, and then it made me not want to go back to it. Because now, as you walk away, you open up the door to the enemy to say, okay, procrastination, laziness, excuses. And now you have a reason, which is a, not a real reason, to be able to not read the word of God. It's a trick of the enemy. When we talk about confusion, Paul says it very clearly. In 2 Corinthians 2.11, Satan is trying, he is trying to take advantage of us. He's trying to take advantage of the believers of God. So we have to be very aware of his devices. Spirit of confusion is one of the devices. And when we talk about spirit of confusion... That opens a lot of doors to all other spirits. What do I mean? Spirit of madness is connected to the spirit of confusion. Now, if we allow the spirit of confusion to maintain and to be able to be active in our life, then we open the door to a lot of disadvantages. When it comes to the spirit of madness, it says the spirit of madness is a state of being mentally ill. Now, this is something that is going to really, really make you think about what I'm talking about. Because... The physical version of the definition of madness is mental illness. But when we talk about the spiritual definition of madness, 
It's overwhelming spiritual control of the mind. It's overwhelming spiritual, spiritual control of the mind. That means that the enemy have your thoughts, he have your direction, he have your attention, he have your whole instinct. You cannot do anything. So what God wants us to do is rely on his word. He said to be honest, be true to his word. Therefore, he will bring you out in the wisdom and the understanding of which he has given us and the power and authority of thereof. Now, we was called as children of God. We are called as children of God. In Genesis, I always go back to that because we have to know who we are in God to understand our identity. When it comes to our identity, he said that he made man in his image. Not just man, but as a human, woman and man in his image and in his likeness. We have to attack to that to our heart. The same way he says, let his, let his word be um, actually within our heart to where we hide it and that we sin not against him, that we will be able to understand who we are in God. The image of God is nothing but the power thereof, the creator, the revolutionary, the God of creation, the God of understanding, the God of wisdom, the same one who produced Christ is the same one that is in you. Jesus said, let this mind be in you. Let you be one with God as God is one with you because he was with the Father as well. So this is something I'm just throwing at you right now for you to understand. You're not just a human. You're not just a person. You're not just someone that is, is meant to go to church on routine to be able to hear the word of God and say, okay, this is tradition. No, it's bigger than that. You, gotta, you are called to go out of those four walls to be able to minister the gospel. Paul said to uh, pray for him that he go forth and speak boldly the mystery of the gospel. And this is for you too. This is not just for Paul. This is for all of us. But when we come to the spirit of confusion, the enemy wants us to keep us in a place where we don't understand. Therefore, we will never get the true knowledge and understanding of God's word. But the Holy Spirit came. The Holy Spirit came and gave us revelation. The Holy Spirit came as the promise of our inheritance to teach us, to train us, to raise us up in the way that we should go, to be able to give us insight and understanding. In Matthew, he said that when the people had uh, offered up the disciples, they, the, the Bible said he told them not to worry. Don't worry about what you're going to say. He said, because when you open up your mouth, I'm going to give you what to say in that hour. And just know this. That it is not you that's going to be speaking, but it's going to be the Holy Spirit of the Father that is speaking through you or in you. So I'm just giving you that encouragement right now. That when you open up your mouth, it's not you that's speaking the word of God. It is the Holy Spirit that is your witness that is inside you that is releasing the power and the anointing and the healing of God to be able to minister to all those who you come in contact with. So we, we're talking about the spirit of confusion. And how it opens up the door, it works two side by side with the spirit of madness. When we think about the spirit of madness, I'm going to go a little deeper. Put on your life jackets because we're going we're gonna to float a little bit. When we think about the spirit of madness, it takes us into the spirit of anxiety, autism, delusion, schizophrenia, and that's just to name a few. So I'm going to break these five down just so you can have an understanding how confusion open up the door to mental illness. So when we say, okay, I'm confused, and now you don't allow the, the Holy Spirit to come in and give you rest and give you wisdom and give you knowledge to be able to remove the things and the lies of the enemy, then what comes in next? Fear, doubt. This is something I just want to say right quick. When you look at someone that is around you that you believe is truly anointed, truly powerful, that you believe is more gifted, you cannot allow the enemy to come in and make you believe that you are not good enough. Because that person that went through their own storm, that person that went through their own trials, that person that went through their own tribulations to be able to get the anointing and the power that they are operating in at that moment. But when you see someone that's anointed, just use it as a power, like a power conduit to where it will build you up to read the word of God, to help you pray more, to help you become what God has called you to be in the first place. But when you look at somebody in a negative, in a wrong mindset, then you get confusion on you because you try to you try to put your place, yourself in the place of where they are at that time. And that's not possible. God has called each and every one of us to be able to operate according to our own use, our own ability, and he raises us up accordingly. So we have to make sure when we look at somebody, we look at them and say, okay, God, I'm next. God, I'm next. Not God, I can never do that. 
God, I'm not worthy. God, I'm not good enough. You can't have those type of thoughts. And you can't speak that out of your mouth because that actually opened the door to confusion. And when you open the door to confusion, then you have anxiety. This is the spirit of madness. This is the opening of the door to the spirit of madness. Anxiety. What is anxiety? It is an emotional state that marks fear and apprehension. It takes you into a place of fear. Fear is a big corporate. <laughs> he, he is a number one uh, corporate in the, in the spiritual realm. Because if fear can come into your life, then he, that spirit hinders you from all things. So we want to make sure that we shake that spirit off. We don't allow the spirit of fear to come in. Because God said he has, he has not given us that spirit. But he can, has given us a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. So if you are operating in fear, be careful on how you're going to react with it. Because it's not that you can't have fear. It's how you respond to it is that's going to, make it, that's going to determine what's going, what it's going to be. So when we think about anxiety, we got to know that that's not of God. And we, gotta, we can't take drugs. We can't take pills. We can't try to uh, use a man cure to heal a spiritual wound. So we have another one, which is autism. Autism is difficulty in communication and relationships. Now, see, when you think about autism, you think of somebody that, that was born uh, special and don't have the full mind capacity to be able to operate fully as, a, as what we call a normal person. But autism is nothing but difficulty in communicating, and actually it makes it very complicated to have a relationship. That's still something that you will open the door to when you allow confusion to come in, because next it taps into the spirit of madness. And that takes you into anxiety, it takes you into autism where you can't communicate, and then you have problems in your relationship, and then you feel that everything is going wrong in your life, and then everything, it turns upside down. That starts from the spirit of confusion. We also have delusion, the spirit of delusion. The spirit of delusion is false beliefs. Now, see, when we think of delusion again, we look at it from a, spirit, a, spirit, a physical perspective. It is something that God is bringing into our life to understand the spiritual. Because first that is natural, then that is spiritual. So when it comes to delusion, it's something that, that we, through confusion, say, okay, you know what? I like what this minister was saying, and it's something that was worldly. But see, we can't, we can't deter them from rational conversation because they have taken upon a false belief because they don't have the truth in them, which is the word of God, to help them overcome what the enemy has placed in them. The next fear we have is schizophrenia. Schizophrenia we look at as like, oh, no, I can't have that because that's just for crazy people. That's people who walk around the street, you know, um, naked and, and, and yelling at people and throwing rocks at people. But I'm here to tell you that there is schizophrenia is nothing but a split mind. It's a mind that has been split. It's a disorganized thinking. Disorganized thinking. Now, I wonder, I want, I'm asking the question, do, do this relate to you? Because we have cloudy mind. We can't remember things. When we try to read something, we can't retain it. It always seems like a fog over our mind to where we just don't have clarity. These are the things that the enemy used to stop us from being able to grow in God. And if you allow that spirit to continue, then it's going to open the door to the spirit of madness. And that's how people end up going, losing their mind and becoming spiritually imbalanced. But I'm going to talk about a story tonight that's in Mark 5, um, 120. And this story, this story um, specifically is about uh, a guy who was possessed, who was, who was possessed. And Jesus came on the boat to be able to come minister. And this particular possessed man met him at the boat. Now, this is a powerful thing when it comes to God. You would think that because he was Jesus and because this man had demons that he will run from Jesus. But this is the thing. When you are anointed and you have that spirit to heal, then your spirit that is naturally connected to God is automatically going to be drawn to that healer because that person wants to be set free. But because they are in bondage, that they are not able to be released to do what God wants them to do. Now, this particular man came out of a cave. He was in a cave. He was very rough. He was, he was throwing rocks at people. He was very violent. They couldn't chain him up because he would break the chains. He was very um, confused. He had the spirit of confusion. He had the spirit of dementia. He had schizophrenia. He had all these things that was going on in his life because he had the spirit of legion on him. Legion is something of many demons. But when we think about possession, I just want to school you right quick and give you a little uh, education right now. In this time, of the New Testament, it says possessed. At this time, in Greek, it means dominizomai. That's what possession means in Greek. 
So that, that is saying, what that means is he was demon or demon influence. So that's not saying that he had hold of the person's spirit. So they use possession in Greek language, but in the actuality of what it means, it's just meaning that he was demon influenced. So when this person came to Jesus, he came to Jesus because he saw the love and the healing of, of God upon him. So he actually wanted to be free. But I'm using this story just to give you understanding how the spirit of confusion can come in and open up many other doors to make you mentally ill. So we want to make sure that we capture that in the beginning because the spirit of confusion is of the enemy. God has not given us that spirit. When it comes to uh, Proverbs, um, Proverbs 3, 5, it says, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not on your own understanding. Don't lean on your own understanding, but acknowledge God. Acknowledge him in all your ways and he will direct your path. That right there is an instruction because he's telling you, don't rely on your own thinking. Don't rely on what you think that the enemy is telling you. Don't rely on what you see, but put your mind in God. Trust the things in God because he said, trust in the Lord, in the Lord. Because our understanding is flawed. It can be misunderstood. It can allow confusion to come into our life. And God wants us to be clear-minded. He wants us to be free-minded. We have to take those thoughts that we have into captivity. The Bible specifically says in 2 Corinthians 10, 5, and I'm going to read this to you. It says, cast down your arguments every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. we got to tear down those strongholds, every thought. That is not of God. The Bible says to tear it down. We have to tear it down. We cannot allow those things to continue to appropriate in our minds. We got to tear it down. If you think it negatively, tear it down. If you think it like you want to hurt somebody, tear it down. If you think that you're not good enough, tear it down. Because the word of God says that Christ will exalt those thoughts. That the mind of Christ will be with you and you will be able to operate in the wisdom and the truth and the understanding that he has given you because you are not relying on your own understanding. So people of God, I encourage you to look in the word of God. Trust in him always because he is going to give you the true understanding. When I came to the understanding that I had confusion, I stood up in anger against that spirit and I said, not today, Satan, because you are not going to come against what God has put in my life. I am called to minister the word of God. I am called to release education, to minister the truth to people that don't know. And God, would, the enemy will try to put confusion in your mind to make you feel that you're not ready to where you say, you know what? I got to pray about it. No, God said if he has called you to operate in the kingdom and that's who you are, you are an ambassador of God. He has given you dominion over the earth. He has given you the truth powers to be able to rule over the dominions of the earth. So as long as you allow the enemy to come into your mind with those particular things, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 10.5 write that down 2 Corinthians 10.5 don't let those thoughts exalt the things of God tear them down, tear them down if it comes into your mind, don't speak it out of your mouth, you come against it you tear it down, you said no I don't receive that, and what you do you speak the truth over the lie. The truth is the word of God over the lie that is being spoken to you. Because the enemy will come in your own voice to make you believe that you made that up yourself. But I'm here to tell you, people of God, that the enemy is very strategic and he knows how to trick the people of God. He has been here before us. So he knows your weakness. He knows your strength. He also know your destiny. So I come right now in the name of Jesus, and I declare in the name of Jesus that the people of God shall stand in the kingdom thereof, and you will establish the kingdom of God just as God has called you to, to, call, to tear down the kingdom of darkness. He shall not reign. He shall not come forth. He shall no longer thrive in your life. I pray that this resonates with you because this is something that we operate in a lot of. The enemy tried to bring confusion in our life all the time, and we have to know how to come against that spirit. So I'm just going to lead you into that place right now of how to be released in the name of Jesus of that. If you have confusion in your mind, just say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your understanding. I thank you for your wisdom. I thank you that you love me enough to clear my mind. I thank you that you love me enough to restore my thoughts. I thank you that you love me enough to have me to be trusted to do your will. 
and you come into that place of, of submission, you come into that place of relationship, you come into that place of love, and you just call in the name of Jesus because he is already there. That is a name above all names that God is going to use always to be able to distinguish the enemy. And you say, Father, fill me with your love. Fill me with the mind of Christ. Restore my mind. Deliver me. Help me to hear. Help me to see clear. And as you read the word, you pray every time before you read the word. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you the revelation. Ask the Holy Spirit to turn the Logos word to, to rhema word. Ask God and see will he answer you. Because he is not a God that will fail you. He is not a man that he should lie. And he is not a man that he should repent. So I said trust in God and watch him work in your life. Anytime you have the spirit of anxiety, you bind the spirit of anxiety. You look, at, you look on your phone. And today we are very techie people. Go and type in scripture on anxiety and watch how many scriptures pop up. Take one that actually resonates with your spirit and you speak that scripture over your anxiety because that is nothing but, but a spirit. But do not allow the enemy to make you think that pill is going to heal that anxiety because it's not going to do anything but suppress it. So make sure you go to God. Now, I'm not saying if you have mental illness, that's, I'm not saying just stop taking your pills. I'm not saying that. But when it comes to the spirit of anxiety, when it comes to depression, that's something that you don't need no pills. That's something you need God. And you need to come to a place of repentance and ask God to heal you and restore you in all those areas to where you will no longer need pills to be able to maintain your salvation. So we come to the end of our show. So I just want to encourage you, people of God. I pray that this has resonated with you because I know that this is a spirit that we all, we all come in contact with very often. And when you come into contact with that spirit, rewind this, remind us of this show, this, this ministry, this video, and just see how we pray to come out of that spirit, to be able to be restored and renewed in God and, and, and be able to move forward in the things of God. And ask for revelation and watch he give it to you. Look for something and ask and watch God show up. I thank you for tuning into my show. I am Pastor April. Just know that I love you. I look forward to seeing you next week, and have a blessed day.